To me, the really powerful thing about cinema is the way it can create empathy and make us understand somebody else's point of view when we feel it. That's the engine behind what I am trying to do visually. I think I've said it before, but Joshua James Richards is, for me, one of the most exciting new DPs working today. His reluctance to stray away from his style of cinematography is admirable, and the way in which he can create magic with natural light is something I'm sure we all aspire to. So in today's video, I'm going to be covering the equipment he used on Nomadland, how he created the organic look through available light, as well as how he and Zhao crafted their now signature look. Now, Nomadland is another one of these films that was released in IMAX, however it wasn't shot in IMAX, or even on IMAX certified cameras, so how was it released in IMAX? Well, by my understanding, they just opened up the frame to a 1.90 to 1 aspect ratio for the release, however, as far as I know, all home releases of the film, Blu-ray, digital and whatnot, are all in 2.39 to 1. We went widescreen on the rider, and I felt it was the right choice again for the landscapes we were going to encounter and the framing possibilities it gives in the centre and sides. So when it comes to the cameras Richards used, it was always going to be a simple setup, going with the Alexa Mini, and I have seen behind the scenes shots of the Amira being used, however he never mentions it in interviews. But why would the Mini be a good choice? Well, it's in the name. It's a smaller camera which is perfect for not only when you're on a time restriction, budget restriction, but also a crew restriction. Now, there really wasn't a lot of other choice if you wanted to stick with Ari at the time in this budget level, although I'm sure now he could have gone with the Mini LF. As for the lenses, Richards went with the Zeiss's Ultra Primes, which are notable for their pristine image quality, while still managing to retain softness, their wide range of focal lengths, and the fact that they are lightweight, well, lightweight for cinema lenses. Although I tested Cook and Master Prime glasses, I went for the Ultra Primes, partly as we had fallen in love with them on the rider, and partly because of their ability to be able to work in super low light situations. I knew that was going to give me a bit more leeway when the sun started to go down. Now, going into lighting, I need to bring everyone back to Songs My Brothers Taught Me, Zhao and Richard's first feature film, because it serves as a basis for their entire style. Now, as someone pointed out on the community post I made on Friday, they were influenced by Terence Malick, which you could probably figure out without even having to do research, but it would be disingenuous to say that their style hasn't evolved over the years, because in both songs, The Rider and Nomadland, it's been continuously advancing and feeling more true to their style of storytelling. Now, to start on the actual lighting process, we need to talk about the most obvious aspect, that being the shooting at Magic Hour. It is a crucial time of day that lends a softness, richness and warmth to the colours. It's the time when I knew we would capture the faces against the backdrop of the landscape with the western glow on the horizon. It almost feels like the whole film is shot at magic hour, with very few exceptions. I mean, just looking through the page of stills, we are plastered with oranges, pinks, deep blues, and whilst it's still natural light, it feels almost mystical. But why use natural light over bringing in 12Ks or whatever other lights you'd need? Well, firstly, budget. Secondly, crew. And thirdly, power. But the most important aspect, or at least from my point of view, is that the artificial lights would have taken away from the true nature of the story. With each film Zhao and Richards have done, their characters aren't living in big cities, they usually don't have much to their name, and a lot of the time, they are first time actors, and at that, they probably weren't expecting to be actors, so they don't have much experience on smaller sets. I'm probably just thinking way too much into this though, and Richards more than likely just fancied the idea of available light from the beginning. As for the other lighting equipment, the package was actually very small. The game was to shoot in available light as much as possible. The lighting package was tiny, and the most I deployed was a K5600 Joker in the scene with the piano player. Other than that, we used light gear, light mats, and light ribbons with gels to bring in light when we needed, such as in the campground scenes. The authentic look is vital to this genre of storytelling. Richards couldn't have gone wild with the colour grade, or on the opposite end of the spectrum, gone black and white. He needed the natural aspect to make it believable to audiences, and everything went into it. The handheld, letting a scene play out, just the raw atmosphere itself. 
So when it comes to depicting Fern, Richards looks towards Dre as the passion of Joan of Arc for influence, which in a weird way really works. And I did watch The Passion of Joan of Arc maybe a year ago now, but if I remember correctly, the way in which Fern was framed resembles a lot how Joan was. There's a lot of eye level, not necessarily centre framing, but almost instinctive, and most of all, they take up a good amount of the frame. Looking towards other influences though, Richards looked a lot at the Hudson River School art movement, which as soon as I pressed enter, I knew exactly what he meant. These paintings remind me immediately of the establishing shots of Nomadland, just the way the light falls, how it's nature for miles, if there is humanity in it, it plays a very small part. I think I'll definitely be looking towards this movement the next time I have any scene set outdoors. But that wasn't the only inspiration, as he also looked towards photographers, yes photographers instead of cinematographers, those including William Eggleston, known for his early colour photography. Shelby Lee Adams, who spent his years photographing Appalachian family life. Sunny Mann, whose large format black and white photography of landscapes suggesting decay and death. And Andreas Gursky, whose work depicts architecture, more specifically large scale architecture, which Richards looked towards for the warehouse scenes. I always find it interesting to look at the inspiration for all of these DPs, especially when they aren't filmed because it allows you to see their own interpretation of the art, and for you to have your own interpretation. I suppose I didn't find a film that felt like what we were doing. However, as I mentioned earlier, they still looked towards Malik, Toll and Lebeski, but if we take a look at Songs My Brothers Taught Me, we can see that their style has developed over the years, from a more documentarian take to a strong narrative one. Now, personally, I think Songs looks brilliant, but in comparison to Nomadland, I don't think there really is a comparison. To start, they didn't seem to have the luxury of choosing what time to shoot. Sometimes they got lucky and had an incredible sunset, but a lot of the film takes place during the day. The colour is also a lot less prominent, the film just feels a bit more faded, which does represent the story, but Zhao and Richard's films have just become more and more colourful. Which moves me on to the colour of Nomadland which again is very raw. I mean, to start at the beginning, it feels true. This is a snowy atmosphere, so the primary colour is a cool blue. Moving on inside the van, where we have a warmer tungsten coloured light, the colour shifts to a more orange hue, representing the surroundings. Then in the warehouse, we have a very neutral palette. Now, I've never been in one, but from their clothing, I imagine it's sort of just a room temperature. Now, we seem to follow this rule throughout, basing colour off of the temperature and surroundings. I mean, I've just done so many videos on films where the cinematography is natural, raw, authentic, but it's because these are my favourite films, so whilst it does get old after a while and I do almost end up repeating myself, I just think these are really important films to analyse, because each one does something different, even if they only did it for a different reason. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, you know what to do if you did, if you have a recommendation for an analysis, leave it down below, thank you so much for watching and maybe I'll see you next time, bye!